What's up, everybody? Um, sorry, I'm coming at you from a little bit of an unconventional way today, but we're going to work with it. Appreciate you guys listening and uh, working with me. I had a little bit of an emergency that I had to go home for, so I wasn't able to make it. But we're going to power through anyways. Um, and I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about the director and some of the production history about um, the film we watched this week. So I'm going to start off by talking about the director, Vittorio De Sica. Um, he was born on July 7th, 1902, and died in November 13th, in 1974. He uh, was an Italian director, um, also an actor, and uh, um, is well regarded as um, one of the most important figures in neorealism um, and that movement specifically. Um, like I said, he was originally brought into the film industry in about 1917 um, as an actor. Um, this was kind of his first love. This was the first thing that kind of got him into film. And um, his love for uh, neorealism and film itself. Um, he attained fame in a film by Mario Camerini named Gli Uamini Che Mascalzoni in 1920s. Um, this was kind of his first uh, claim to fame. A lot of people started to know him. Um, after this movie, he kind of took on this role of uh, a handsome, um, charming figure in different movies. Um, and he was always kind of like looked at it as like, uh, like that from that point on in his acting career. Um, he would continue to act in more than about 150 films throughout his career and throughout the majority of his life. Um, but his, you know, he later on took up his interest in directing and especially directing neorealism uh, movies and the neorealism movement aspect of film. Um, as a professional actor, he was often known to use non-professional actors. And this was kind of like a staple of his. Um, partially because he thought it kind of uh, gave a little bit better of a realistic portrayal of uh, reality and kind of went along with that um, realism that he was trying to show in the movies. Um, so he often liked to use non-professional actors, liked to use children as we saw, um, and often worked well with them. He got, um, he often incited really good performances from people who had little to no talent in acting whatsoever. Um, so that was a little bit kind of his characteristics and we'll see some of those more later on as i talk about the production history some of the things that he kind of was known for doing and one of which is the non-professional actors um another one is kind of uh his staple of defeat and sadness um he's been called europe's greatest tragic filmmaker um he would later be known for his kind of retrospective films often involving uh you know, great defeat. And um, I think that also kind of adds to his love for realism as well. And the idea that not all films are going to turn out to be all happy go lucky when um, in reality, that's not so much the case. So um, that was also a big staple of kind of his style. There we go. That's, uh, that's him at an older age and at a younger age. Um, in his heyday, as you would say. And a little bit of the uh, uh, production history, um, Bicycle Thieves was shot in 1948. It's the third collaboration between director Vittorio De Sica and screenwriter um, Cesar Zavattini. Zavattini was looked at as one of the leading uh, theoreticians involving neorealism at the time, um, and it was making them essentially a perfect pair. Uh, they had a lot of great works together prior. Um, they had three kind of three or four famous um, neorealistic movies that they had made together that they're kind of known for. Bicycle Thieves, of course, being one of them. Um, like the films prior, um, The Children Are Watching Us, um, Shoe Shine. Bicycle Thieves kind of utilizes the innocence of children and actors. Um, you can see that through uh, the. Um, Antonio's son that we see in Bicycle Thieves. Um, and he tries to kind of turn the everyday situations into dramatic cinema. That was kind of his goal was to um, turn everyday things that 
people might um, encounter and turn that into a dramatic uh, and thematic movie um, for people to watch. Um, that was kind of his realistic portrayal of, you know, what was going on in the world. And that was often why some of them didn't end as happy as others because kind of was uh, an extremely realistic portrayal of, you know, people's lives. And um, he essentially did this by, you know, creating sort of a documentary feel in Bicycle Thieves. Um, that was kind of another one of his things that you've seen in not only his style, but neorealism in general. Um, has sort of a documentary feel as if you're kind of following somebody through their life rather than um, kind of a large narrative story behind it. As in Bicycle Thieves, we kind of see like we're uh, following um, Antonio and his son through their journey obviously the stressful time of him trying to get his bike back to produce work, to produce food for him and his family. Um, it's got a very documentarian aspect to it. Um, and it was felt very natural. It was shot in uh, natural sets. Um, like I said earlier, it was non-professional actors. Um, the male lead was a factory worker. Um, the wife of him, the female lead, was a journalist who tried to interview uh, Vittorio De Sica at one point. Um, the child was just a boy who was in the crowd watching the filming go on that Vittorio spotted and pulled out and auditioned. So there was a very natural feel to a lot of these um, films, as we can see. And um, it kind of goes to say that the films de-emphasizes the editing and um, emphasizes more of the storyline and the economic conditions of the main characters rather than um, letting the editing tell the story and the letting the editing be kind of the main point or the main driving force of the film rather. Um, he kind of focused on class and especially in Bicycle Thieves, um, you know, the, the systematic oppression and class and um, post-war Italy at the time. Um, although these films um, were critically acclaimed, um, Bicycle Thieves won the Oscar for the best film, um, best foreign film rather, um, the films never really uh, reached um, high acclaimed per se in terms of a worldview. Um, it never became widely spread the, the um, neorealism movement was never huge um, and kind of never really took over the same level of like a Hollywood cinema that we kind of see nowadays. Um, so eventually um, Vittorio De Sica would return to kind of Hollywood scene in the 50s short after filming The Bicycle Thieves um, kind of due to the lack of money and the lack of uh, wide acceptance. But um, in terms of film history, um, the neorealistic movement itself um, has a huge, plays a huge role in terms of uh, different styles that we've learned about and different ways of filming that have been important. And um, these films that these two um, have made have been a huge impact on that historically. So even though they might not have uh, been huge critically acclaimed movies. Um, they are still considered, Bicycle Thieves is still considered by many to be the best movie of all time today. Um, so they're still incredibly relevant. Some say that it's very timeless and that um, it still teaches lessons and all this um, that are uh, relevant to today. So um, in terms of movies and the movement itself, uh, these two are incredibly important and have been and the movie itself was uh, incredibly important in terms of the uh, movement as well. So that's it for what I got. Thank you guys for uh, sitting through what I have to say. Um, Kristen Carter, you guys take it from here. Thank you guys.